Welcome, my name is Tim. And in this short video, I'm gonna guide you through the proper procedure for diagnosing a faulty potential relay on a residential air conditioner. Now this is the potential relay here. Uh, the potential relay has a set of normally closed contacts between terminals one and two, and its coil is placed between two and five, but it's not your typical relay. What it's responsible for doing is removing the start capacitor from the circuit once the compressor motor reaches approximately 75 or 80 percent of its rated speed. You can't leave the start capacitor in the circuit, it'll overheat. So this is the job of the potential relay. Now if it's faulty, um, the compressor is going to try to start, but it's going to end up cycling off on overload and it'll continue to do that. So let's take a look at the actual procedure. We're going to go back to the thermostat and click on it to turn it to call for cooling. This will also turn down the temperature setting. Click OK on the procedure guide at the top. Next, we need to make an inventory of which electrical loads are operational. And we can see the indoor fan motor is in fact running, as evidenced by the spinning blue arrows. And when we go to the outdoor unit, we can see that the condenser fan motor is operational at the top here, but our compressor is not operating. So our outdoor fan is operating, but our compressor is not operating. Next, we need to take some resistance checks. So we're gonna to need to turn off the disconnect to do this. So click on the handle of the disconnect and turn off the power. Next, let's go to the control panel in the outdoor unit. And I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit. And we can see we have a couple capacitors here. We have a start capacitor here that's outlined. And we have our dual run capacitor, which serves both the compressor as well as the condenser fan motor. So our first step is to discharge the capacitors. This has already been done for you in the sim. So our next step is to isolate or disconnect the wires from them. Simply click on it and on the menu, click isolate, and this will disconnect the wires from the start capacitor so we can check it. Now that we've disconnected the wires, I wanna briefly look at the wiring diagram for the outdoor unit. So click here at the bottom left and you'll see the diagram here on the right. And you'll notice that each of these components, the start capacitor, the potential relay contacts, as well as the run capacitor are all in series to the start winding right here. So if any one of these were to fail, typically what will happen is the compressor will try to start on the run winding, it'll draw locked rotor amperage, it actually won't be able to turn the compressor over. This locked rotor amperage condition will cause the internal overload on the compressor to cycle in this case. So we're assuming that's happening. We've got it narrowed down to these three components. So we're gonna check each of them with the multimeter. So I'm gonna store the wiring diagram away. And once we've disconnected the wires, we're gonna click OK. And we're gonna measure the microfarad value of each of the capacitors. We're gonna start at the star capacitor and we're gonna place the leads across the capacitor at the two glowing orange hotspots. And we've got 200 microfarads, which is the correct rating on this capacitor. So the star capacitor checks out. Again, don't forget to discharge these prior to disconnecting the wires. Very important. So we have our 200 microfarads verifying the star capacitor is good. Now we're going to disconnect one of the wires from the run capacitor. And when we do this, we can now measure the microfarads of the compressor portion of this dual run capacitor. And that would be from HERM, which, which generally indicates hermetic compressor. So we're gonna place one of the leads there and then to the common terminal. And we should read 25 microfarads across this, and we do. So this verifies that the run capacitor is also good. So we can click yes on the procedure guide. Our next step is to check the contacts on the potential relay. Before we do that, let's go back to the wiring diagram for just a second and take a look at the potential relay again. You'll notice that it has a set of normally closed contacts here. So when we're measuring resistance across it, we should read zero ohms. So let's place the leads at the connections on the potential relay from terminals one to two across those normally closed contacts. And when we do this, we can see we have an infinite resistance reading across them or OL on the meter. And this verifies that those contacts are open. Now, because they're normally closed, when you turn the power off, those contacts should revert to that closed position. And that's not occurring. So this kind of verifies that the potential relay is faulty in this case. So on the procedure guide, did we measure zero ohms? No, we measured infinite. Our next step is to replace the potential relay. Simply click on it, click replace on the menu, 
and you've solved the problem. Now, prior to leaving the job, make sure you observe one full cycle of operation to make sure everything else is functioning properly and go up to the space to make sure that cool air is being delivered to the space. But obviously we're gonna to need to turn the power back on to verify that. So let's click on the disconnect handle and we're gonna go back up to the space and just look at this floor register here. We can see we've got cool air coming out of it. So everything appears to be working great. Now to clear up any confusion you have on this procedure, simply click on the top left icon here and you can review each step that we took in this procedure to diagnose this faulty potential relay. Good luck on all your future service calls and I'll see you back here soon. Thanks for watching. Do you want to try 3D simulations and VR HVAC training yourself? Then visit interplaylearning.com to start a free trial today.